welcome back with Weebus to the channel that we can do with today. I'm going to be covering something very different from what I usually do on my channel. Uh, but essentially, I have recently been super nostalgic for Skylanders and wanted to play it again. And so I thought I would try and emulate it. And considering the PlayStation version and Xbox versions are uh, generally quite a bit better than the Wii versions, I thought even though I already had Dolphin, I would get this PlayStation 3 emulator for it, especially because I had heard that you could simply, instead of having to install drivers to get your plug-in portal of power to work with it, you could simply load Skylander files uh, to get them to work uh, in this emulator, which is way more convenient. So I, I wanted to emulate them on this emulator. Um, the only problem with this is, of course, emulation tends to get a bit complicated, and, um, well, um... I should probably give you some advice if any of you are out there wanting to play these games on emulator on how to get them working. So I actually wasn't going to make this video at first just because when I played Giants and Spot Force there wasn't really much to say. Um, but once I got around to Spyro's Adventure, which I thought would be the easiest to emulate, it turns out this one is by far the most complicated to get working. However. I have found a way to consistently get working. Well, I say I found it. I found it by scouring the forums for this emulator and someone else had found the solution. So, uh, anyway. Uh, let's start with Giants, because that's the first one installed. That was definitely the one I had the most nostalgia for, even though I start with Sparrow's Adventure. Giants has always been my favourite. And Giants, the fix is pretty simple. There is one small problem with Giants, but it's generally the most stable game out of them all. Um, and that small fix is if you go to the Advanced tab, there's this Driver Wake Up Delay section. Uh, it's by default at zero, and you want it to have set to, well, basically anything but zero. I have it set to 400 to be safe, but 200 should work as well um yeah uh you just save that or click apply or whatever um and you can even right click and make absolutely sure you're booting with your custom configuration there uh you can also change the configuration here i believe that will change it for all of your games though and since this is a giant exclusive thing you probably just want to go and change custom configuration for this one specifically and again it's advanced driver wake up delay you want to set that to be not zero <laughs> Uh, I'd say I said have it set to 400 and to show it works. I'm gonna load up Giants right now You can see I've already played for nearly 16 hours um, It's gonna have to quickly compile some shaders and it will load up Load up my uh, nightmare difficulty file And sure enough There we go and you can see it's all working. And I can easily change my scalander just by going like this. And, uh, well, actually, let's make that a bit smaller. Uh, manage scalander's portal. And say I don't want to have Series 2 Drill Sergeant. I can either go and create, and it'll come up with a list. And annoyingly, this list isn't very well ordered. You're going to have to look quite hard, but uh, it's somewhat ordered. Uh, you'll either find it in there, or if you've already created a Scounder and you want to use it again, I've got my own folder here. You can create your own folder, uh, and I can just go, uh, let's say, I want to be Eruptor. And there we go. Actually, I should probably pick one that I've played a decent amount with, that I have a decent amount of stuff for already, so you, I can show that it keeps its levels and stats and all that. Uh, I brawl. I've got my eye. You can see he's kept all his stats, because first of all, he's already level 10. He's also got the Future Hat, which usually you would have to unlock in uh, Auto Gyro Adventure. I haven't gotten to that level on this save file yet, but I have the hat anyway, because obviously I put it on him in, uh, previously on the other save file. Uh, and if you go to his stats, he's got 40 speed and 10 from the hat, which Ibrol usually only has 20 speed, and that's from me doing heroic challenges. So you can tell that everything's carried over. You can tell I've got the upgrades and all that, because I can do... All the things you usually can't do with Ibrawl if you have no upgrades. Alright then. So, with that said, I think I proved my point. It's working. Let's close it off. And let's go on to Swap Force. So I actually don't have any custom configuration for Swap Force. As you can see, I just use the default. However, there's just some general kind of... Uh, some general things to be aware of in Swap Force. First of all, 
Um, I am running this on a pretty high-end PC, and even I am still experiencing a couple frame drops. This game, honestly, can, it's kind of surprising considering how old it is, but it still has very impressive graphics, but that means that... Uh, if you're trying to play these games on a lower end PC, I would not even recommend trying Swap Force. It's probably not doable. Um, as, but as well as that, Swap Force is not quite as stable as Giants. Uh, essentially, Swap Force, you'll probably experience a couple crashes. Um, that being said, um, it's definitely playable. Um, it's just going to be frustrating. Sometimes you might lose your progress. So, my advice here isn't any kind of setup for, like, the custom configuration. It's just a general warning of where is Crash, like, viable. Um, chapter 4 crashed on me once or twice. Um, none of these chapters did. These were all fine. Uh, and Bodhi Islands and Winter Keep, Winter Keep especially, uh, it seemed to struggle with, considering, I believe this is the one where there's a snowball fight going on, and all the snowballs flying everywhere, constantly, like, spawning particles, seem to increase the, uh, decrease the frame rate and make it more likely to crash. Uh, so those three levels are the ones to really watch out for. However, I don't believe I ever had the game crash on any of the levels. And as I say, the crash isn't on, like, oh no, it's so frequent I can't even play it. Nah, you it's, uh, it's fine. You can still get through it, it's just going to be frustrating because sometimes you're going to lose some of your progress. But luckily, this is the game that introduced checkpoints. So as long as you've reached a checkpoint, by the point you get halfway through a level, um, it will. when you go back into the level, you'll go back to your checkpoint. As well as that, even if you haven't reached a checkpoint, all the collectibles like the hats and the legendary treasures you found will still be collected if the game crashes midway through. And all the treasure that your Skylander earns and experience will still be on your Skylanders. The only thing you'll lose is your progress in the actual level. Uh, but all the collectibles, all, everything you got in your Skylanders and all that, that will all stay. There's only one other issue I have to mention with this game, and I'm afraid I don't have a solution to th for this one. Which is the Adventure Packs, Tower of Time, and Sheepwreck Islands do not seem to work. It's a little bit strange. So, I have created um, them. If I go to the Scounders portal, I can load them up because I've already created them. Um, Tower of Time. Put it on the portal. And you can see it seems to work. I mean, it showed Tower of Time. It's, it's doing its effect. But, of course, the main reason you want to use this is to unlock the new Adventure Pack level. Well, if I go to the level select, it's still locked. At first, I thought, wait, okay, maybe if I'm remembering this wrong, maybe I have to beat the game before I can play Adventure Pack levels. I thought I didn't, but maybe I do, and then I beat the game and it still wasn't un uh, unlocked. And, uh, as well as that, if I check my collection, it says that I do not own the Tower of Time, even though it's literally on the portal right now and it recognises it. Uh, it's, it works with the adventure packs from Scow and, uh, Sp Sparrow's Adventure, the first game. However, you can't play those levels in this game, so it's kind of useless, that, unfortunately. Uh, in fact, this is the case for all items from Swap Force. All of these, like, items that are new in Swap Force, uh, you can place them on the portal and they'll do their effect. However, they won't count as added to your collection, and the adventure pack levels will not be unlocked. I'm afraid I do not have a solution for that. I've looked around the internet as thoroughly as I can. Uh, I even found uh, someone who had made some videos who has already kind of shown some expertise uh, on what's going on here and help, uh, has been helping people out and getting this stuff working, and I'm f afraid they have no idea either. And I have up uh, updated this to the most recent patches, so unless a new patch is made, I believe we're kind of stuck with this, which really sucks, because of course that means I actually was really interested in trying to 100% swap force, because... Uh, I definitely put the most effort into Giants, and I never really tried to be a completionist in Swap Force, so I was really interested in trying to get 100%, but of course, without the Adventure Pack levels, I can't do that now, which is a uh, which is a shame. So, yeah, a couple issues with Swap Force, but overall, still very playable, and you don't have to do too much to set it up, as long as you've got a high-end enough PC to be able to handle it. Um, but this is where we get into the real uh, tough part, which is Spyro's Adventure. Uh, the first game. You would have thought it would be the easiest, but my god, is it not. So, okay. I have quite a few things going on with the custom configuration of this one. Uh, I 
launched the game at first, and what happened at first was that uh, there was massive, massive lag spikes, even just on the menu. Uh, but then once they cleared up, the game would run really fast. So I was like, okay, maybe that's just because it's still loading the shaders and all that. Uh, but then when I actually got into the game, it just got worse and it wouldn't clear up and it got to the point where the game was freezing like a couple seconds into the first level and uh yeah it was quite a problem and i couldn't figure out what the issue was and i was literally i was fiddling with all these settings and at the end it was a two-part problem first of all apparently the game constantly tries to connect to uh some servers um, if you're disconnected, and that's what causes, causes the massive lag spike. So you need to set your network status to connected. You don't need to do anything else. I don't believe you need to have your PSN status simulated, but I've, I've set it to that just in case. Um, anyway, so you need to do that, but that's the easy part. There's one other problem. That will cl uh, clear up the lag spikes, however, the game will still crash frequently. Uh, and it will basically be impossible to even do the first level because of how frequent the crashes are, which is a big problem. And the problem here especially is the solution to your problem lies in this tab, the debug tab, where you need to limit, uh, set the amount of PPU threads to 4. The, uh, the default is 2, and most games do not use more than 2 threads, but clearly Sky and Aspire and Adventure, for whatever reason, even though it's probably the least demanding out of the 3 games, decides it needs 4. Now, the problem with this is that if you've got your RSPC, whatever, emulator up right now, um, sorry, RPCS, <laughs> um, then you probably can't see this tab. That's because this debug tab is hidden by default. And you're probably like, oh, okay, do I just need to go to my settings to uh, unhide it? Mm. I'm afraid it's a little bit more finicky than that. So you can see here, I have the folder I've installed this emulator in, and... If you go to this folder, GUI Configs, there'll be a folder called Current Settings, and the file extension for it will be a .ini. If you double-click this, it should open it in Notepad, but just in case it doesn't, right-click, Open With, Notepad. And it will show all this text. This is what you need. Show Debug tab equals true. Yours, if you can't see the Debug tab, should say false instead of true. Uh, now, this is the only thing that kind of sucks. Uh, I obviously know you can change this, however, it's a bit finicky and I can't figure out how I got it to work. I just can't kind of kept trying it. For some reason, what did happen at first was I kept setting this to true and I'm saving it, which yes, by the way, before you close it, remember to save, otherwise it won't change to true. Uh, saving it, then closing it, and then reopening uh, the emulator. And then when I look in the in the configuration, it still doesn't show the debug tab. And then when I go back to look in this file and be like, but I set it to true, it's set back to false. Somewhere inside the code of this thing, it occasionally sets this automatically back to false um, if you've changed it. And I don't know why, and I don't know how to get around it. I'm afraid that all I can tell you to do is just keep trying it, just make, keep trying setting it to true, saving it, closing it, reopening the emulator, and it should it should work eventually. God, I hate giving that kind of solution, but that's the best I can do. If you're wondering uh, why I even bother making this video if I don't know the exact reason why, it's because, I mean, I can imagine a lot of people having a lot of trouble with this, and... Certainly, I had a lot of trouble with it, and I can't find much, like, direct advice out there on how to sort this out, so I thought I would be the one to provide it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, once you've got the debug tab to show up, it's much simpler from there. All you have to do is, as I say, go on uh, Change Custom Configuration, and you should now have this debug tab, and it's this that you want right here. I'm actually kind of surprised that they want four threads. Um... Because, as I say, um, usually multi-threading is used to, well, you know, make things run faster if they're, like, a lot of work to do and all that. But, again, this game is it's, it's less than 10 gigabytes, and it's definitely the least graphically advanced of the Skylanders games. So I'm kind of surprised this is the one that throws a fit if you don't give it four threads. But, uh, it is. There's a bit of scre um, screen tearing there because I don't have VSync on. Uh, but you can set it to have VSync. In fact, I'll quickly show you that. Um, so yeah, you might have seen the screen looked a little bit jittery in the Toys for Bob section. Um, if you want to fix that, it's not a big problem, but you can tick the VSync box here. This will make it run slower, but it will make it so you don't have any screen tearing. And...
and let's just double check this works. It is a little bit slow when it comes to saving and loading. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, actually, that wasn't too slow. It, it's, it's taken a while in the past. Ah, oh, yes, of course. I've still got eyebrow on the portal. It doesn't recognize eyebrow. That makes sense. Um, eyebrow, of course, is, and Tower of Time. They're both from future games. Um, and I guess we'll just put Spyro on it. That's, that's the classic. Uh, of course, a lot of them are backwards compatible. So even though this is Mega Ram Spyro, which I believe is from Swap Force, of course, normal Spyro exists in this game, so it just reads it as normal Spyro, if you didn't already know. So you can use the same Skylander, even if it's like a Series 3 or a Series 2 in the first game. And you can see, that's worked. So yeah, hopefully this video was helpful to you if you were trying to emulate these games, because I know that they're quite an issue to emulate. Um, they do. This does seem to run quite smoothly so far, although as you can see, I definitely haven't played this one so much. Uh, because I've been trying to get it to work for so long. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I also do plan to be making a few videos on Scounders in the future. The only reason I haven't made any yet is just because, you know, <laughs> it's not that fun when you don't have very upgraded Scounders. So, you know, I'm trying to get uh, my levels and my upgrades up before I start making videos. Anyway, thank you for watching, and hopefully this was helpful to you, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.